Hey guys, SFP here, and welcome to another episode of my FIFA career mode for DC United. Now, last we left off, I believe I got a couple of victories, so hopefully I can keep this momentum going. And as I said earlier, I am going to check the squad report monthly, so let's see what we have here. And I see Jalen Robinson has increased here. And so is Chris Corp, which is good, and Perry Kitchen, who I believe has yet to sign his contract. I'm going to see if he actually will sign a contract later on, so we'll see about that. As for everyone else, I see that Arieta has also scored, or uh, excuse me, boosted up. And we got a couple people here that have boosted up as well, so that's that's really promising. And hopefully as the season goes on, they will uh, continue to increment, I guess, and get better as we go along. Now, unfortunately, our older players such as Eddie Johnson and Chris Rolfe and even uh, Spindola here are decreasing in certain stats, and typically it's always going to be the uh, physical attributes, as it's to be expected. It should make too much of a difference, so at least not now. So anyways, here we go with our first game against the New England Revolution. And as we go here, we are prepping for the game against the New England Revolution. Match commentary by Martin Tyler and Alan Smith. And here we have our starting 11 with Bill Hamid in goal, and I guess I skipped it here. And there is Perry Kitchen, one of the three players that I'm trying to keep until they retire. The other two being Bill Hamid and the captain Bobby Boswell. Once Bobby Boswell retires, I will have to choose a new player to add to the list. So hopefully I will be able to build up an audience and have you guys vote on who should be kept. And here we go at the beginning of this game. And Eddie Johnson has the ball. And he shoots. And the save by the goalkeeper, which I believe is Shuttleworth, if I'm not mistaken. And I say by him as well. And here we have a corner kick with Fabio Spinola up to serve the ball. And Pontius doesn't get the header. Ouch. That should have been a foul. So I got to say about that. And now the New England Revolution are going for the counter attack. Nice ball there. And, serve. and is he going to serve the ball? No, he is not. By the way, my defense managed to get back in time. Anyways, going out of the game here, the MLS season has finally started for those of you who actually watch the league. And I did manage to watch the whole game, which was, I believe, Galaxy and uh, the Chicago Fire. And here we have what I believe is a PK, if I'm not mistaken. Goodbye, Andrew Farrell. Andrew Farrell's been a promising player for the New England Revolution. I'm still not quite sure what's his best position, whether it's center back or right back. He has the physical attributes to play both. But I personally, I guess, in my opinion, he should be a right. Uh, excuse me, a center back. We'll, you know, depending on the position that need to be uh, filled, I guess it'll depend on his career. Anyways, here we have Fabio Spindler getting set up for the free kick. And I was, as I was saying before, you know, I watched the first match, which was the Galaxy versus. Uh, the Chicago Fire, and I gotta say, the first half, for those of you that saw it, it was a little bit underwhelming. I expected a lot more out of uh, Los Angeles, especially coming out of the uh, their fifth uh, MLS Cup, I guess. As for the Chicago Fire, I'm actually not sure quite what to expect. Uh, you know, going back last season, I believe they had the most highs in history, possibly, or I uh, know at least for the for this uh, past season with 18 if I'm not mistaken and so I at the beginning I was expecting a little more from them you know you, you can only go up from that point but I guess with all the new acquisitions that the team has made they still need a little bit more time to gel I mean they have three new DPs and at the moment neither has shown the quality that one expects from their DP or I guess the impact as well that a DP should have in a game I think the most eventful thing that I guess a DP did do for the Chicago Fire was get a yellow card, which I believe was Maloney. Anyways, the first half ends 0-0, zero, zero, so at this point I need to make a couple changes and see if I can get a victory out of this game.
Here we go. Let's change in Halsty. And I believe I always I always do the same sub, so Perry can just coming in and I'm gonna switch well for Ponies. And those are the two changes that I will be making. Here we go with a nice through ball here for Eddie Johnson. Eddie Johnson manages to go by one. Five spin the shoots. Oh, and a nice save by Shuttleworth. Now New England Revolution are going to take their chance here. A uh, nice block there. And the shot is wide. Substitution here for Andy for the New England Revolution. Andy Dorman comes in and Codwell. Caldwell, excuse me, comes out. And you go nice surf by De Leon. De Leon passes it to Silva. Silva passes it to a spin, a spin, a shoot, goal. And there it is. The goal I've been waiting for. The 1-0 win. And right, I guess, near the deadlock of the game. So the 87th minute. That's cutting it pretty close. And I got to say, it's kind of... A bit disappointing. I expect a little bit more from myself, especially being a man up. But a win is a win, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to take the three points as well. Oh, that's a nice goal, though. Nice setup and everything. There you go, Fabi. Celebrate that. The second goal of the league. Trying to get that golden boot, which I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get. And it, ooh, nice serve ball, but uh, uh, fortunately they weren't able to get it. And Shuttleworth ends the game by passing it to his defender, and the game ends 1-0, which is a victory for me. Another three points to add to the table, and hopefully I should be in first place by now. But I guess we'll see later on. Fabio Spinella with the best rating, which was to be expected. And we go with the press conference. I know people say press conference don't do anything, but I, I'd like to imagine that they do. Whether it's a big, you know, effect or a small effect, I, I think there is an effect to it, but it's it's probably not enough to decide a game. And here we go with the first, I believe, match of this Atlantic Cup. Now, for those of you who are new to MLS, DC United's main rival is New York Red Bulls. Now, I would argue that the LA Galaxy is a bigger rival because of the um, history they have, especially uh, concerning MLS Cup Finals. But when you have a league that's split into two divisions to create rivalries, that, that, then that tends to happen. And I guess there's the whole aspect of, you know, the city's capital, which is D.C., with, I guess, I guess a world capital, in this case, New York City. Now here you go with my starting 11, which is the same, I think, as my previous game, so I'm trying to keep this consistent. And this is really my best team, so I really want to win this game, especially with a rival team. So I'm going to keep my best players on here, and hopefully I can get a win as well. And as for here, starting 11, now they have... Now with the updates, we actually have Sasha Kleshin on the field as well. Red Light Phillips is up. And unfortunately, no Thierry Henry because he decided to... I guess not decided, but the, his contract ended. And I believe now he is holding a position with Arsenal. And I want to say it's for the youth development, but I'm not quite sure. And that was a nice through ball. And it hit the post. That was very unfortunate. It would have been a beautiful goal. And here you go with a Spindola passing it to Eddie Johnson. He's going to make it. And he shoots goal. What a nice goal by Eddie Johnson. A nice pass by Fabian Spindola. The goalkeeper kind of... <laughs> I guess the goalkeeper, which I believe is uh, Robles, Luis Robles, was indecisive. He wanted to go get the ball, but then he kind of took a few steps back, and that was his mistake. Now, I've never been a goalkeeper, but from what I've been told, you got to commit to whatever it is you want to do. If you're going to go for the ball, don't stop halfway. If you're going to stay in your spot, then stay in your spot. But for those of you who are goalkeepers, let me know if I'm wrong, because, you know, I don't, 
I honestly don't know, but I guess that's just my, my two cents there. And that's how the first half ends with a 1-0 win. And look at those fans over there. One zero five minutes spindle and I'm gonna make a couple changes here and I'm gonna take Eddie Johnson out and I'm gonna put in Hari Hairo, excuse me, Arieta. And I'm also gonna put Perry Kitchen back in here as I always do, and I'm gonna put in Chris Rolf as well. Yes. Oh no no, I switched it for a straw. I don't remember. Three changes for this uh second half and hopefully I will be able to contain the lead. And take the three points. Now well, here we go with Fabi. Fabi. Fabi's by himself. Fabi shoots and no, it was a nice block by the Red Bulls defender. Now here you go with another attack by the New York Red Bulls. Here you go, Felipe. Felipe passes it to Question. Question. My defense sucks. They're not nowhere to be seen, and luckily, the shot is not on target. Hamid puts the ball back in circulation and here we have one of my attacks here with Nick DeLeon. Nick DeLeon's probably going to pass it. No, he's going to go for it himself and a nice block and oh my god it was a, it hit the post <laughs> again this is like the second time this game alone and then we go with a counter attack for the Red Bulls and luckily for me the player was offsides although that still was a pretty close one here you go with my next counter attack here with Estrada. Estrada's going to serve the ball. Serve it, Estrada shoots. And a nice save by Robles. Well, this game is going back and forth. Now it's New York's turn. New York headers, but Bill Hamid saves that calmly. And here's probably the last segment of the game here because we're in the 90th minute. And a nice pass here for Bradley Phillips, and he unfortunately can't get the ball on target and misses wide. Now, Bill Hamid puts the ball back again in circulation, but no, here we go with another counterattack by the New York Red Bulls, but no, the game ends 1 0, and it's another victory for me. Another three points, and against a rival is always a good thing. And 5 minutes spin again gets the best rating for the game. Well, look, FC Dallas and the Sounders tied. That's something that I'm not sure uh, would possibly happen. Well, I guess not possibly happen, but it's it's not something that would usually happen. I mean, the Sounders have been uh, pretty good during the regular season. I mean, they won the Supporters' Shield last season. Although they did manage to get that tie during the playoffs. But that, you know, the playoffs is a whole different situation than the regular season. And here we go with our last game of this episode, which is against the Columbus Crew, who I believe we've already faced once before during the season. And I believe I mentioned the whole logo switching and basically getting a new type of identity to promote their team to a wider audience. And hopefully that works well for them this season. And here we see Columbus Crew starting 11, who, which hasn't really changed. You have Federico Uyin, who of course is a creative general there in the midfield. And Kai Kamara, who apparently they're using here as a lone striker. I honestly don't think he's a lone striker. He works better in tandem with another, I want to say, bigger target type of forward. But, I mean, it's a video game, so we'll see what happens. And here I believe I'm using my B team to give my A team a rest. With the exception of Bobby Boswell, who's my captain, of course. And we're off here. And a nice counter uh, starting attack here by Columbus Crew. A nice save by Dykstra. I'm not sure what happened here. I could have sworn it was a PK. I was a little bit frightened there. Anyway, Dykstra puts the ball back in the game. And here we go again with Columbus Crew. Columbus Crew, this is their second attack this game so far. And they shoot, and again, the ball's too weak to trouble Dykstra there.
Nice pass there to Estrada. David Estrada passes it to Arieta. Arieta cuts back. Arieta comes, shoots, and a goal for Arieta against his old team, the Columbus Crew. I bet they wish they wouldn't have sold him now. Or I guess in the MLS, his case, traded him. Which I believe is for an international spot, which I'm not sure how it'll benefit them, but we'll take Jairo Arieta. Nice curve there and everything. And there's Dykstra there, happy to get the goal that will give him the temporary victory. Jairo again also has, this, excuse me, not again, but also has two goals in the MLS season so far. Tied up with Eddie Johnson and Fabian Espindel. And here we go. And a post. I swear that post is out to get me. That's like the third post in this video. And it's always that same situation. And oh, what a nice header by Rolf. But it was too weak. And didn't really trouble the, def the goalkeeper there, Clark. So Miriam with kind of, kind of shoots. And a nice save by Dykstra there. And now we have a corner here that will be dealt with by Iguain. Iguain is a master of the dead ball. Except not in this case. It was a t nice header by the Columbus Crew player. Unfortunately, it was too soft to uh, cause any uncomfort for Dextra. Here we go again, and oh my god, I thought that was a PK. Miriam shoots, nice save by Dykstra. Get the ball out of there, and that's how the first half ends, 1-0. Favoring the DC United team. Here we go. Oh, there's another tie, I didn't see who it was, but apparently there's a tie in another game. And now I'm going to do my radio switches. I'm going to take Kitchen out and put, I believe, Jared Jeffrey. And then I'm going to take Doyle and put him in for Arieta. And lastly, I'm going to put Michael Farfan in for Davey Arno. And there are the changes that I just made. And now the game will begin once the Columbus crew sets a play in motion. And here we go. Going with a decent attack by Farfan. Farfan shoots and a nice save by the goalkeeper, Steve Clark. Porter, the Canadian, passes it to Estrada. Estrada passes it to Michael Farfan. Michael Farfan shoots. Rolf shoots and unfortunately the shot wasn't placed in the right spot because the goalkeeper was literally right there. Could have made it a little bit more complicated, Rolf. Come on. Now with this corner... There's a missed opportunity. And here we go in the last minutes of the game with Chris Corp putting in the ball back to Jared Jeffrey. And that's how the game ends with a 1-0 victory for me. Now this is, I believe, the third 1-0 victory in a row that I've gotten. And while visually it's not good looking, it's still beneficial for me. And that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you for watching and tune in for the next one.